All right, Travis Wayne gets all. Uh, let's final hour tonight. Let's give you the uh, lesson, Sunday school lesson for tomorrow. That they will not tell you, because they are telling you they're Christian, and Jesus is your Christ. And uh, as I've gone over with you for these lessons for the New Testament, they're not. New Testament. They are apocalyptic literature of the Jews, which means they're books of Revelation. And so it's the Apocalypse of Matthew, it's the Apocalypse of Mark, it's the Apocalypse of Luke, it's the Apocalypse of John. Just a different one than the Book of Revelation by John. And so, I, what they're writing about is not literal history. They are symbolic teachings, types and shadows, of the latter days. And as such, you need to know that Joseph Smith said that the latter days is about Mormonism. That... Mormons are to replace the Jews. Not Mormonism replacing Joseph Smith's Jewish church with Christianity. And so, uh, as Joseph Smith likewise wrote parables, prophecies of the latter days, even the Book of Mormon tells us it is the learning of the Jews, manner of prophesying, latter-day book of Revelation. It, too, needs to be interpreted with a Mormon Jewish viewpoint. And so Joseph Smith even tells us that instead of Jews, when you read in any of the texts, you put in Mormons. The Christ, you replace Jesus, or any of the other books that have a hero with a different name. For example, the hero of Genesis is Noah and Joseph. Sort of mixed his hero stories all together. There's more, but uh, he wrote it so that they could lead to Joseph being the hero of Genesis. It was a separate book. It was not intended to be one continuous text with Exodus following. And so uh, Joseph is a type and shadow of Joseph Smith who paved the way for the man like Moses whom Joseph Smith says would be a Mormon so you have Genesis which is comparable to Joseph Smith starting the church and then you have Exodus with the man like Moses the Mormon of the latter days see how that worked and so Moses you put in the Mormon Instead of Egypt, you put in the United States of America. Instead of Pharaoh, you put in the false prophet of the great and abominable church. Same thing with Joseph. See how that works? So the fall of Pharaoh is the fall of the great and abominable church. With Mormons being freed from their bondage in the great and abominable church as they follow the man like Moses to Zion and it didn't really work out well for Moses and as I've gone over with you in other videos it's not doing well for Mormons either as we're in the final year of the latter days and you've missed the exodus you missed the second harvest and now we've got the forced exodus of which you're still not understanding any of this and so, <coughs> lesson number 10 here is Matthew 9 and 10, Mark 5, and Luke 9. And what they want you to get out of this is from Matthew 9, that Christ has power to heal us physically and spiritually. 
do not understand that this has to do with the latter days. The name Jesus is why this author is using this, because the stories are talking about him saving the people. Because that's the meaning of Jesus. Yah, which is the Hebrew God, saves. And so even though the prophecy is for the name Emmanuel, which Matthew tells us it is supposed to be, Matthew then goes instead to say, this is not a real literal history because I'm naming him Jesus. Because it's a type and shadow symbolism of the latter day Christ. And so what this means physically has to do with what Joseph Smith warned Mormons about in his visionary account which was tampered by the great and abominable church and they're refusing to correct it after putting the Joseph Smith papers online is that Mormons need to know who their Christ is that it's not Jesus that it's a fellow Mormon and that he will be in Utah at the start of his ministry in 2017 and that he'll be online worldwide for all to listen and hearken to him to physically save those who hearken and thus spiritually save as well but the primary focus is physical first then you can save spiritually but if people aren't Mormons aren't going to let themselves be saved physically with the exodus in 2020 they're not going to ever be prepared for spiritual saving. And so this is what is missing from that portion. And we'll go over the scriptures as I always do. Because they give us more information that the church doesn't want you to know. They've purposely selected these and altered the meaning of them. So that you do not find the truth. Because... How many of you actually go beyond Sunday school to actually try to learn from scriptures? Exactly. You don't have time. You're too busy. So much to do. You got to work. Pay the bills. You make excuses. The Lord gives his servants power to do his work. The Lord does not give power to those who do not have it to usurp the church and murder the founder. Do not be confused by that. And then the final one, they they don't even cover Mark and Luke. It's Matthew 10, 17 to 20. So it's just Nine and ten? Yeah, nine and ten in Matthew. So they don't want you to know what's in Mark and Luke. We'll go over it. When we are in the Lord's service, he will inspire us with what to say. You're supposed to hearken. And uh, as the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith teaches, you only say what Joseph Smith and the man like Moses says. You do not preach your own doctrine. You preach their doctrine. Alrighty. So, Matthew 9. Bruce R. McConkie put, Jesus forgives sins, heals a paralytic, and calls Matthew. He eats with sinners. A woman is healed by touching his magic garments. Magic underwear. Really? He had underwear back then? He had a loincloth. Didn't have the garments. Oh no, neither did Adam and Eve. Oh no, but it represents the garment given to Adam and Eve when they were found naked in the Garden of Eden. 
which is called the garment of the holy priesthood. And as much as you do not defile it, but are true and faithful to your covenants, it will be a shield and a protection to you against the power of the destroyer until you have finished your work on the earth. So why aren't they wearing them? Why isn't Jesus? And he raises Jairus' daughter to life, he opens the blind eyes, casts out a devil, and preaches the gospel. So let me interpret what Bruce R. McConkie is getting wrong here. <clears throat> As I previously told you, it's all about changing your mind. That's the correct translation of the Greek word that is mistranslated as repent. It is change your mind in correct translation into English. And as such, you see a whole great need of people to change their mind. This is the latter days. Mormons are born in the covenant in the great and abominable church and are indoctrinated therein. They need to change their mind. They are possessed with devils. They are all kinds of mentally sick because they are thinking incorrectly. They are believing incorrectly and thus they are feeling incorrectly. Matthew 9, we can come back. Should be easy to find. In the Doctrine and Covenants, section 1, verse 16, Joseph Smith warns that Mormons in the latter days not only violate their temple marriage ceilings, but that Mormons will not seek the Lord to establish his righteousness because every Mormon is walking in their own way after the image of their own God whom they call Jesus whose image is in the likeness of the world they're projecting what they want Jesus to allow them to do or not do and impose it on others whose substance is that of an idol when you give objects power, moral, spiritual, ethical powers, for good or evil, you have created an idol. It's an object. Precepts are what are good or bad, right or wrong. And we need to produce the results of those precepts so that we may judge them as good or evil right or wrong that is the true gospel and so when you have an incorrect precept you need to change your mind because you're not thinking right and so Joseph Smith warns to Mormons in the latter days. You need to get on the right thinking. You need to have your mind changed to the correct thinking because the great and abominable church, which is referred to as Babylon in code here, church did not decode this. That's strange. They could have put the great and abominable church, but it will fall. and Mormons will perish with its fall. That's why you need to leave. Okay. <coughs> and so eating with sinners is not a sin. because he's setting an example for them and teaching them the correct precepts that if they will hearken to him they will not be sinners anymore because they will have changed their mind 
The woman is healed by touching his garments. It's just your regular monthly cycle, dear. I'm sure there was more to it, but with what the author was saying. But it's the concept of of uh, changing her mind. It's not just men, women too. And uh, raising to life somebody who's been dead. You see here, it's using a different thing. You are spiritually dead when you're believing incorrectly. You need to change your mind, change your thinking, so that you are brought to life. You're now thinking correctly. And so the same with opening blind eyes. When you have the wrong kind of thinking, you're blind to the truth. You need to change your mind so that you may see. And then casting out a devil. You're possessed with an incorrect precept. So you need to change your mind so that you are possessed with the good spirit. And then preaching the gospel is what I just told you. That's what it's all about. So this is not complicated. You just got to realize that it's not literal history. So then we can go to 10. Christ instructs, empowers, and sends the twelve apostles forth to preach, minister, and heal the sick. Uh, Matthew, we probably should have brought that up. Matthew is accused of being the author of the story because of this pa that passage. Let's uh, pull up the definition of Matthew. Baby name meaning. Baby name meaning. Actually, Matthias in Greek, the gift of God. Ta da! So now you see how it applies to the story. So it's the apocalypse of the gift of God. And the gift of God is Emmanuel. And so uh, by calling Matthew, let's see if I can find that and go back to the nine. See, the gift of God is on the correct path, thinking correctly as well. And so, yeah, we see a repetition of some of the stuff we've previously talked about. Do men put new wine in old bottles? And children in the bride chamber mourn. Did I do nine last week by mistake? Because this sounds familiar. All right. And Jesus passed forth from thence. He saw a man named Matthew, gift of God, sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said, uh, that's tax office. It has it in the footnote below as the Greek translation. I'm not going to push the issue to make sure that that's correct. <laughs> He's a tax collector, in other words. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he did so. He changed his mind. Tax collectors are very hated. In every single culture throughout all time. In every nation. nation. <laughs> Alright. So you see how they used Matthew in that sense? <clears throat> so they could have easily named it the Book of Simon, because he's the first. Why didn't they name it the Book of Simon, or the Gospel of Simon, or the Apocalypse of Simon? Because they already have an Apocalypse of Peter. They just didn't put it in the, their canon. And so, yes, those other scriptures need to be embraced by us as Mormons, because they're all prophesying of him the Christ of Mormons. <clears throat> so there's a lot of scriptures that need to be put in, and they're not commandments for you to obey. They're prophecies of your Christ so that you may know him. 
So you shouldn't fear that you're now going to have to obey more commandments. That's just a lie that you're told to fear putting in new scripture. Uh, let's see. Preach, minister, and heal the sick. Those who receive them, receive the Lord. So yeah, this is the twelve apostles. This is their authority to preach. That's it. That's all. Joseph Smith likewise called his twelve apostles to preach the Book of Mormon. That's it. That's all. They were not allowed to hang out in a city where the church had been established. They need to get out. They need to find another place that doesn't have the church and preach until a church is established. Then they go on again and again and again. <clears throat> and they didn't require tithing for worthiness. Especially for worthiness to go to the temple. That was Brigham Young's additions. It was Brigham Young who screwed it all up. You do not get authority to lead the church. Especially when you screw it up with what low stature you were given. Because this doesn't qualify you to become the president of the church once the president of the church is dead. That was Brigham Young who made that change because he was the president of the Twelve. That doesn't make it from God. Joseph Smith already set up how the church was supposed to succeed him upon his death, and nobody followed it, which means Joseph's church is dead and needs to be restored by the man like Moses. And so, uh, these uh, twelve with Christ as the teacher, instructor, also comes from the Therapeutae that I've talked about. During the Roman period time, there was what was known as the Therapeutae. They had a teacher, and they had twelve disciples that followed the teacher to the various other congregations. And uh, so, yeah, they had multiple Christ and and disciples and so which is interesting oh yep it's disciples in one and then apostles in two so hilarious but uh, <coughs> but that's where this comes from that's why therapy therapeute is associated with healing the sick for these, these, these 12. That's all that is referring to here by him. But again, go back to the main reason for the parable. Change your mind and you are well mentally, spiritually. So yeah, he, he was prophesying for us. Now he already knows, he's given a spoiler alert here when he says, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. This is also a prophecy. Judah refers to Genesis, who betrayed Joseph Smith. See, it's prophecy for the latter days as well. His brethren would betray him in Carthage jail. Who was in Carthage jail with Joseph? Hmm. And uh, likewise, the man like Moses would also be betrayed by the same brethren who betrayed Joseph Smith because they usurped his church. So this is a prophetic dualism that's involved here. A dualistic prophecy and uh, it's also a betrayal of his mother and that's his mother's name is Judith Esau's wife after he lost the birthright and blessing and uh, that doesn't really apply here for this lesson per se but just so that you know the names have specific 
prophetic meaning, especially or even in the context of the story. And so Judah is not J, it's Y, Yuda. Does that sound very close phonetically to Utah? Because D and T are phonetically the same. Okay. So Joseph Smith knew what he was talking about, even though that's weird. Because Utah did not exist until after Joseph died. And it was not even a Mormon who got Congress to use that name for the territory and then for the state. All right. Mark 5, but it turned out to be the case. It's the land where the Mormon headquarters is that usurped his church. Mormon, Mark 5. Okay, Jesus cast out a legion of devils who enter into the swine. That should have been last week's lesson. We covered that last week. Seriously, guys? Who wrote this? Oh, right, I know exactly who wrote it. So, yeah, woman is healed by touching his claws. They merged the two lessons into the one here. Which, as you can see, the two lessons for this week and last week belong together. Because we're still on the same subject matter. Change your mind. And he raises Jairus' daughter from the dead. So, that's why that's the same. Okay, and then Luke 9... We might be done early. Twelve sent out. Jesus feeds the five thousand. Okay, there's something new. Peter testifies of Christ. Interesting. Because Peter, an Egyptian, is seer. The seer testifies of the Christ of the latter days. Jesus foretells his death and resurrection. This is Apocalypse. It's not an actual death. It's not an actual resurrection. It is talking about the fall of the great and abominable church and the fall of Joseph Smith that was usurped by the great and abominable church and the need to restore Joseph Smith's church. Restore the kingdom of David, as is prophesied for the Jews. And that's what the resurrection and ascension to the throne refer to. And it goes back to the Egyptian main story of Osiris, Horus, and Set. Uh, he is transfigured on the mount. Ah, he gets the keys of authority. He heals and teaches. He is the teacher of the Therapeutae. That's what that's referring to. Okay, so... Let us proceed with the 5,000. <sighs> okay, set them to preach. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all that was done by him, the Christ, and he was perplexed because that it was said of some that John was risen from the dead. John the Baptist, and of some that Elias had appeared, and of others that one of the old prophets was risen again. So, yeah, they're trying to talk about the prophecies from Malachi that uh, Elijah will come back in the latter days. That's the... Greek is Elias, in Hebrew it's Elijah, and so that's what they're talking about, is the coming forth of Elijah. Joseph, in the Kirtland Temple, on the third day of Passover, Elijah appears, and then Elias, which is not Elias, it's Elishua, and Moses, and the God of Sal or Yah of Salvation. Jesus also appears in vision in the Kirtland Temple. But those are prophecies also of the latter days. Because Joseph Smith is the forerunner for the man like Moses in the latter days as well. But Elijah is just the god Yah 
it's the man like Moses, Emmanuel. All of them are Emmanuel, just the different names for the particular nature and characters, as pertaining to the stories of their prophecies for him. Uh, so Herod said, John I have beheaded, but who is this of whom I hear such things? Okay, and they returned to Utah in a desert place. The house of Seda, Beth Seda. <coughs> Let's see if uh, there's a quick, easy reference since I don't have my brown driver, well, I my devalued brown driver Briggs. see you giving us the meaning of the name. Here we go. Ah, yeah, it is important to see the correct spelling from the Hebrew. Zod. It's the house of Zod. <laughs> house of hunting. <laughs> it's got the uh, throne symbol from Paleo Hebrew with the delta symbol of the pyramid. So it's the throne of the pyramid. And thus refers to Pharaoh as a hunter. But uh, more importantly, it's the, the house of, of Horus, or the throne of Horus, as the capstone of the pyramid is representative of Horus, who restores the throne. So yeah, it's the house of... And the house is actually the, the wife, because Bathsheba, Bethsaida, Bethlehem, so, it's the wife of Horus, technically. And so I'm going to argue about the meaning of hunting. Though I can understand why they would have put it in there. But according to the Paleo-Hebrew spelling, what I gave you is correct. And so, uh, when you look at the context, the story should also tell us. And sure enough, in verse 11, we see that I'm correct. He spake unto them of the kingdom of Horus, and healed them that needed healing. Changed the minds of those that needed changing minds. So yes, the throne of Horus. The Christ of the latter days, Emmanuel. And, yeah, as a prophecy, I'm correct, because Utah is a desert. Judah, the desert. And uh, Mormons were warned not to go with Brigham Young into the desert when he was claiming that Jesus is there. He deceived you, and you went with him and violated Matthew 24. Okay, sent the multitude away, for we are here in a desert place. Said they need something to eat. Ah, the five loaves, two fishes, his two birthdays. The five loaves is referring to the 23rd of September, 2017, which is everywhere that prophesies about it and begins his ministry. 2017 is the beginning of his ministry. That's that birth in a symbolic form. And it's the five loaves because the star Spica is at the womb of Virgo, 
virgin shall conceive and bear Jupiter <coughs> at the star Spica, Bethlehem, the house of bread. And so that's where the bread comes in. The five loaves of bread is for that. And then you have the two fishes, Pisces. That's his actual birthday. That's the constellation, or yeah, that's the constellation for his birth sign. Pisces. And so that's what all this is about, is that they're in Utah, 2017. They're Christ, born in March, March 17th, in Pisces, 1970. I've gone over this in other videos outside of the lessons, but uh, there's multiple justifications for it. Even December 25th in the Julian calendar, you got to convert it to the Gregorian calendar and it becomes March 17th. And then there's others. St. Patrick is another confirmation. And even Joseph Smith was involved with prophesying of this, as well as the law of Moses with what Brigham Young falsely did to, uh, wrongly did, falsely and wrongly, did to Thomas B. Marsh in order to usurp the presidency of the Twelve. Deuteronomy 19 is the law of Moses for false accusers, and thus the need for the restorer of Joseph's church. And so, no more the president of the Twelve to become the president. That uh, that whole system will be brought down by one who is born on March 17th. <coughs> okay, and then it's a sacrament, which is also from the Egyptian story about the latter days of Horus restoring the throne. The man like Moses, the Mormon who restores Joseph Smith's church. Uh, because uh, uh, Osiris, the father of Horus, was murdered by his brother Set. And the second time around, his body was broken with a knife, chopped into 14 pieces. Other stories use it according to the 42 provinces or gnomes of Egypt to uh, have it apply to the Egyptian people, but the original story was 14 pieces and it corresponds with the 12 tribes of Israel. You're going, what? 12 is not 14 because of the Egyptian story. You have uh, 13 tribes, because Joseph gets a double portion. 13, Ephraim and Manasseh, take the place of Joseph. And then uh, the 14th is Dinah, the female, who doesn't have a male appendage. She was raped. But uh, nonetheless, in the Egyptian story, when Isis, his wife, sent out missionaries to recover the elect body parts from the four quarters of the earth back to Zion and Heliopolis, the Sun City. <coughs> she uh, assembled the body parts, but one part was missing, the male appendage. And so she fashioned a new one and either directly conceived or became a bird and hovered over and conceived that way depending on which Egyptian version you're using nonetheless she conceives Horus and thus a virgin shall conceive and bear a son the bird representing a sign in the heavens of the immaculate conception of Virgo getting pregnant with Jupiter <clears throat> so the Egyptians knew about this way back when and I know they know because their Egyptian New Year was on the 21st of August 2017. You remember what happened on that day? Yep. If you're confused, I recommend Gods and Kings. I think that, or is that, that's the Exodus Gods and Kings. 
Gods of Egypt, I think it's called, the movie. It's not accurate. There are some Hollywood special privilege changes made to the movie, but the general idea is the same. Horus loses his eyes. Solar and lunar eclipses. His two eyes are the word for Peter, which is seer in Egyptian. So yes, there's a lot of direct Egyptianism here as well in these Jewish writings. And so as Mormons, we likewise congregate at church to partake of the broken bread of the body of Osiris and the blood of Osiris that was spilt for us. And as man and wife sealed in the temple, as Melchizedek's having been washed and anointed in the initiatories to become Christ's, we then give birth to the bloodline of the latter-day Christ. Because he's human. He's mortal with mortal parents. And so that's why the sacrament is. And that's why he, Jesus said in last week's lesson, I am Lord of the Sabbath. And has his last supper right before the last day of the latter days. His, his crucifixion on the cross of the two solar eclipses the first and the last one that cross over southern Illinois. That's the cross of Jesus. His resurrection is rising up as a birth from the grave, from the waters, the creation concept, the start of the millennial reign of Zion, and then ascension, ascension to the throne as also the sign in the heavens. That's what is meant by those. Don't take them literally. Because you're going to defy the laws of physics and thus make a fallacy argument. That just ain't true. And so that's why you partake internally of the body and blood of Osiris is the concept of taking in and giving birth to the future Horus. And so, yes, he's going to be a Mormon. That's why Mormons do it. This is for Mormonism. It's not for any other religion. But if others want to partake, great. Just don't join the Great and Abominable Church. and the 12 baskets for the 12 tribes of Israel. Which is the assembled body of Osiris. Missing a certain body part. Okay, so, yeah, Jesus asked Peter, Whom say ye that I am? It says, Christ of God. Don't tell anybody. Keep it a sacred secret. That has to do with his Egyptian name meaning. It's the hidden name. John in Revelation 19, which is talking about 8 April 2024, uh, tells us that he has a hidden name that no man knows but he himself. That's what he's talking about here is Emmanuel, the Egyptian sun god at noonday. Peter, the seer, Son of man, he's human, mortal, must suffer many things, be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes. He's going to be rejected of Mormons. Not just him, but also Joseph Smith. He's going to be murdered by them, and be slain, and be raised the third day. Three days of darkness, that's what that's referring to on the third day of darkness is 8 April 2024. Okay? 
restoring Joseph's kingdom, who had been slain. Uh, take his cross. Follow me. So yes, you're supposed to be knowing of the the latter days and be looking for him and following him, hearkening to him so that you may be saved physically and spiritually. But we're in the final year and people haven't, Mormons have not been hearkening. So whoever loses life shall save it. Whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. Uh, for whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, the Jewish gospel of Joseph Smith. Of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. So yes, Mormons definitely should be ashamed for being ashamed. And he is ashamed of Mormons when he shall come in his glory. That's at that time when he ascends to the throne as the judge to determine who gets to come to Zion and have an inheritance there in Zion, the mountain cities of the Lord. Okay. There shall there be some standing here which shall not taste of death for 1700 years till they see the kingdom of God. Not what it means. It's the latter days. Those alive in the latter days will not taste of death until they make it to 2024. Fortunately, there are people who are dying who do not have faith. Or who are blinded and didn't know that they were supposed to have faith in another Christ. Be seeking another Christ. Came to pass on eight days after these sayings. So here it is. Eight days. From 2017 to 2024 is eight years. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. There are eight days celebrating Passover. So on the eighth day, 8 April 2024, he gets coronated. He ascends. And he's upon a mountain, the mountain city of Zion. <clears throat> and thus, Moses, Elijah appear with Jesus. They give him the keys of authority for the kingdom of the millennium. And he actually gets them before, but this is the coronation event that's taking place here. The same thing that Joseph Smith was prophesying about with his Kirtland Temple experience. It's an exact correlation that he's referring to and includes some extra people involved to help us understand. And it's referring to Passover. Eight days of Passover. Eighth day. There's a reason for this. So on the third day, which is 2020, 17, 18, 19, well, 19, 20. <laughs> You're supposed to be preparing for the Exodus. 2020 is the Exodus. 600 years from the time Lehi left Jerusalem, the first year in the reign of King Zedekiah, king of Jerusalem, put on the throne by a foreign adversary, Babylon. So, yeah, it would also have helped if he had won his lawsuit against Pharaoh. But Pharaoh said no. Peter said unto Jesus, Master, is it good for us to be here? Let us make tabernacles. Okay, and then a voice out of the cloud. Behold, this is my son of Mary. Hear him. Beloved in the Egyptian is the word Mary. So Peter and Mary are all involved here by Father Amon.
and thus the tree of life is the love of God, the Mary of God. And so it's talking about Mary who gives birth to Jesus. Joseph knew what he was, well, Senior knew what he was doing when he wrote, rewrote that. That's the 116 pages that were rewritten. And he comes down from the hill. Hill in Hebrew is Horus. Direct transliteration. Uh, look upon my son. So a man of the company cried out, Master, look upon my son. He is my only child. Comes down from a hill. In Hebrew is Horus. It says, look at my son, my only begotten son. See what's going on here? Uh, and the spirit take the wrong thinking. Change your thoughts. They change your mind. So he casts out the devil from him. Um, son of man. I think that was it. That was extra for this, wasn't it? Casting on devils. Go up to Jerusalem. The village of the Samaritans. You do know the Samaritans were the poor Israelites that were left behind when Assyria came in and deported the wealthier Assyrians back into Assyria and then deported Assyrians to the northern Israel land to resettle the land and give tribute to Assyria and then thus interbred with the Israelites still there and became the Samaritans. And the Jews had a conflict when they got returned from Babylonian captivity when building the temple. And thus they've had an eternal hatred against each other. Son of man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Thus Jesus, Yah saves. Foxes have holes, birds have air. That's the same thing we talked about last week. Let the dead bury the dead. Okay. So that's, that's that, isn't it? Luke 9. Yep, we're done.